brings you a lifestyle show from people you know. Now, Central Valley Today. Well, who better to reform the education system or speak out about competition than someone who is inside one of the most competitive law schools in the country? Sahaj Sharda is a law student at Columbia Law School, and he's an emerging leader in the education landscape and the business world. And he joins us now with his latest book, The College Cartel. So, Sahaj, thanks for being here. I think this is such an interesting subject. So let's talk about your latest book, The College Cartel, and what inspired you to write it. So I was at Georgetown University, another elite college, uh, and I graduated in 2020. And while I was there, there was this big scandal, the Varsity Blues scandal that happened on campus. And to refresh people's memory, essentially in the Varsity Blues scandal, a lot of wealthy people were paying sports coaches uh, to pretend like their, to, their children were world-class athletes, um, when oftentimes they'd never played that sport. Um, and so you may be familiar with Olivia Jade, the celebrity, um, and people like this who got caught up in that scandal. And I remember the feeling at Georgetown when the scandal emerged, which was, it was, you know, on the outside, there's a lot of criticism of the elite colleges for being corrupt. And on the inside, the feeling was, well, there's, there's nothing so bad. You know, most people, or a lot of people at least, pay donations to the development office. Um, there are legal ways in which we've, you know, sort of institutionalized corruption. So why is it so bad that they're doing uh, this bit of side corruption on the side? This is really not that big a deal. And I just remember thinking that that internalization, that narrative on campus was insane. So I decided to take a lot of time, just study what went wrong with their elite colleges. Why are the demographics so warped? towards the wealthy? Why are the schools so expensive? And why, even as we've had this information revolution in the rest of the economy, where the cost of knowledge has gone down in every other sector, why is it that the education sector, uh, information sector, has gotten so much more expensive over the last 30 years? And so those are really the ideas and questions that motivated me to write this book. I think th those are great questions to ask. You know, when one thing goes one way, you want to you want to look at everything else and, and, and you see this divergence in information and it is such an interesting perspective. So you have gone to some very elite colleges. You are there. You are in it. What function do you think a degree from an elite college serves? And does it still serve the same role as it once did maybe 10 years ago? Yeah, so the conceit, you know, the common thing that the schools like to say is that, you know, the reason that they are so uh, desired is because they teach you, they're the best at teaching. So Harvard will tell you they have the best professors, they have the best curriculum, they're the best at imbuing knowledge in these young charges. The issue is, of course, uh, that same Harvard in their marketing materials, in the way in which they present themselves to the world, will brag about people like Bill Gates or Mark Zuckerberg who dropped out of those schools. Well, if your product is teaching, then you should never try to advertise someone like Mark Zuckerberg or Bill Gates because they didn't get the education there. So what is it that they're actually selling? A place like Harvard, they're not really selling the skills. They're not even selling the education. What they're selling is a credential, and they're selling a signal. And so if you're an employer and you're quickly scanning through 100 resumes, when you see Harvard, you know that there's an independent signal. This person may or may not be a certain level of intelligence from a certain class background, and therefore someone you probably want to take seriously as a candidate. That is the fundamental product that is being sold by the elite colleges. That little signal, that little line on the resume, so that all, in all the other noise, one student gets picked out out of the other 99. And so um, it, once we start to conceptualize that and understand that, we really understand the schools don't need to be so expensive. If all you're doing is credentialing, if all you're doing is signaling, then they certainly don't need to be four years. Uh, we don't need to go through the song and dance of um, you know the skills and educations and majors and all this other stuff. There are all these things that could be cut in terms of cost. And if signaling is the only thing that we're trying to do, we can have a much, much more effective and cheaper system. It is, it's such an interesting point, and many of these elite colleges have these divisions on campus, these groups on campus, who simply sell certificates. They sell education to people in the industry, and then they get the certificate from wherever that says, you know, I took this Harvard class, and now I have a certificate from Harvard. They're doing the exact same thing out there in, you know, the competitive market. So we've talked a little bit about what what we think uh, a call makes a college a cartel, but what have you learned? What do you think can be done to reform this system? Yeah. So, so just to sort of clarify one point, you know, uh, it's not like these schools are individually or unilaterally sort of um, you know just responding to the market. 
they're creating and structuring this market themselves. And so the elite colleges have, you know, essentially this very collusive relationship with the rankings, with U.S. News and World Report, where essentially the logic of the rankings is to cater to the elite colleges. And so year after year after year, the rankings tweak their formula um, to basically make sure that the same elite colleges come out on top. And what that means then, the essential logic of the rankings becomes uh, – spend as much money as possible on education. In other words, charge as much money as possible for education and admit as few people as possible for education. Now, when you've structured the rankings in this way and every school wants to climb in the rankings, what ends up happening? You have a very scarce and very expensive system where every school is you know, below sub 5% acceptance rate in the elite bracket and they're charging more and more and more every year. And it's not clear at all that the quality of education is getting better, that students are better off. In fact, I would make all the opposite arguments. And the real pernicious aspect of this isn't even the elite colleges, but it's through their capture of the rankings, all the other colleges, the UVAs, the, you know, uh, the George Masons, all these other schools um, that aren't even in the elite bracket but are still ranked by the same rankings agency end up becoming more scarce and more expensive. And that's the thing that affects everyone. That's the thing that inflates the student debt bubble. And so I think that by breaking up the elite college cartel, we can actually free all these other schools from the same competitive pressures to be part of this sort of elite cartel. And so I think that's the thing that we can really do. You can use antitrust law to do it. This could be something that Congress does. But, you know, a philanthropist could buy U.S. News and World Report and invert the rankings criteria. There are all these ways in which we can solve the market, but we first need to understand how that cartel works. And it's through this rankings mechanism. That's where the hub of collusion really is. Yes, introducing a little bit of competition into the marketplace, uh, a business and, and a business philosophy that you have also written about. So maybe we'll talk to you again about that, that other book that you have. So thank you so much. A fascinating conversation. I used to work in higher education, so I love conversations like this. We will put all the links to Sahaj's book. We'll put it online, The College Cartel. We will tell you where to find it. Sahaj, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much for having me. I've really enjoyed this conversation. And check out our website. That's where you can find his book, yourcentralvalley.com slash CVT. That's where you can go if you miss anything from our show. And we'll be right back after the break.